Welcome to Plowing Through History, the show that answers the question that's been nagging at you nightly. What have farmers been doing all these years? To answer that question, I'm Terrence Leahy, and this is Plowing Through History. In the Roaring Twenties, while the rest of America was dancing to the Charleston and seeking out the speakeasies in the back alleys, rural farming America was in a crisis. These farmers in the years of World War I had prospered, selling large quantities of grain and livestock to be exported to war-torn Europe. High prices had encouraged larger and larger portions of land to be turned into crop production, and farmers had responded to this call by taking on debt and hoping for a larger turn. With the end of the Great War and Europe returning to its own farming, American export prices tanked sharply, leaving these American farmers with large surpluses of grain and a crowded domestic marketplace. This slump also coincided with the rise of industrialization, bringing man-made fibers to the market cheaper than cotton could be produced, sending those cotton farmers in southern states into economic tailspins. Adding to all the troubles with the prohibition in place, wheat and barley that had once been grown for beer either sat stagnating in a farmer's storage bin or fed to livestock, and, shockingly enough, turned into moonshine. This was also, ironically, the first documented case of a drunk cow. In the mid-1920s, as the stocks and cities were marking the time period with their tunes and boos, the farmer's struggle worsened. Congress, pressured by their constituencies, sought to originate federal subsidies to aid their agricultural brethren. Their efforts resulted in the McNary Hagen Farm Relief Act. The idea of the bill was to have the government purchase farm commodities at a higher cost than the market value and then hold it to sell at a higher price later or export it later at a loss. The act, however, was vetoed by the then president, Calvin Coolidge. Not vetoed once but twice. Coolidge said in his veto message that he believed the act would only hurt farmers in the long run and expand already growing federal bureaucracy. He instead advocated a program favored by his Secretary of Agriculture, William Jardine, in which electricity, better seeds, and better business practices would be introduced to these rural communities. This would be the sorry state of agriculture throughout the 1920s and into the years of the Great Depression, During the reign of FDR and the rise of New Deal Democrats, federal relief programs would eventually find a place in agriculture. It's highly probable that, having been raised in a farming community, Calvin Coolidge knew the dangers that government subsidies could embody. Perhaps in the distance, he saw the possible future where farmers could become dependent on these subsidies. It's too easy to look back at what once happened and blame bad crop management, overeager farmers, or politicians for what happened. Instead, we have to ask a more important question. Are we making the same mistakes today? Thank you for your time. Please subscribe to us on YouTube for more fun farm videos, agrarian lessons, and rural humor. Also, if you're listening to podcasts, please subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and wherever podcasts are listened to. Also check us out on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash intellectual agrarian.